the National Desk, America's News, now. The cleanup crew has arrived, but work needs to be done even before they start. How long it could take before the port is open and new bridge is up in Baltimore. Sean Diddy Combs may be the highest profile case of alleged trafficking, but the raids of his homes are just the tip of the iceberg in combating this cross country problem. And then squatters rights allow individuals to take advantage of the law. What happens when those laws begin to change as a fight both red and blue states are looking to start. This is the National Desk, America's News Now. I'm Dee Dee Gatton. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. And cleanup equipment arrived in the port of Baltimore today to begin removal of the wreckage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. But don't expect the port to be open too soon, as Maryland's Governor Wes Moore says it's going to take weeks for crews to remove wreckage after the cargo ship lost power and struck the bridge. Each crane can lift up to 1,000 pounds. The challenge is that the key bridge is estimated to weigh somewhere between three to 4,000 tons. So our team needs to cut that truss into sections in a safe, in a responsible, and in an efficient way before it can lift those pieces out of the water. This crane that we're looking at is massive. The thing we also know is this, so is the challenge ahead of us. The question remains just how quickly can the port reopen and have a new bridge in place? The National Desk Scott Taylor has more. The Francis Scott Key Bridge and its collapse will continue to hamper supply routes across the nation. Up until this week, it was the second largest continuous truss bridge in the U.S. Billions of dollars of cargo in and out of the port of Baltimore. Supply experts believe the direct effects of no bridge will be felt the most in the auto machinery construction and coal industries. A lot of families, you know, all over the United States are looking at this bridge collapse and wondering if it's going to affect them buying a new car or getting a loaf of bread or a jar of peanut butter. What do you think is going to happen um, in the time period between now and when that bridge is rebuilt? From the consumer side of things, I would anticipate that there's likely going to be stress and increased volume on other ports that could indirectly affect other industries. So it's hard to say what those might affect, but the direct effect coming out of Baltimore from a consumer side, I would say focuses on the auto side. The key was a steel arch continuous through truss bridge. Truss bridges extended without hinges or joints across three or more supports. So what type of bridge could replace the key? Dean Amadonza, Director of Engineering with the Fields Company based out of Houston, Texas, believes a cable-stayed bridge is the best fix. It's the same type of bridge as the Sunshine Skyway Bridge in Tampa, Florida. It requires less cable and can be built much faster than suspension bridges. There's a dozen or so ways you can design a bridge. Um, I just, um, you know, looking at uh, speed of construction, looking at functionality, looking at uh, current technology, um, the cable stays are, especially for this type of application, tend to be the go-to choice. The construction time, you know, what traditionally would take four to five years for the conventional uh, bridge designs from a long time ago, that's been greatly accelerated. This cable stay does as well. You might remember it took seven long years to fully construct the Skyway Bridge, but after the tragic accident in 1980 that demolished part of the bridge, traffic was diverted onto the surviving two-lane span for several years. The new key bridge could be built much faster, especially if the feds are in charge. I would say, you know, aggressively, maybe, you know, uh, two to three years could, could have this bridge, could have this bridge construction and functioning. More than 40,000 square miles are at a critical risk of fire from eastern New Mexico into the western Texas Panhandle, the National Weather Service issued this morning this afternoon, saying a mix of low humidity, a week of dry weather and high sustained winds up to 25 miles per hour is leading towards this large fire threat. And new developments, a fourth person has been arrested in connection to an ambush at a Boise hospital on March 20th that allowed a prisoner to escape. 
Prosecutors say 27-year-old Tia Garcia from Twin Falls, Idaho, owned the car that inmate Skyler Mead and his accomplice Nicholas Umfenauer fled in after Umfenauer shot two corrections officers. Mead and Umfenauer are also suspected in the killings of two men while they were on the run. And here's a live look over St. Louis, where the city may lose control of their own police department. The Missouri House overwhelmingly approved a bill for a state-run police department, 109 to 36. Proponents for the bill point to high crime rates in the city as a reason for the change. Opponents said a crime report by the St. Louis Metro Police showed 2023 had the lowest overall crime trends in the last decade. The city took over their own policing back in 2013. It's now in the hands of the state Senate. If the bill is signed into law, it will take effect August 28th. United Airlines is working to provide new flights to customers after a flight from San Francisco to Paris was diverted yesterday. The Boeing 777-200 landed safely in Denver after having an engine problem. 285 people were on board and it is the latest of several incidents involving United. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is investigating Boeing supplier Spirit Aero Systems. He opened the probe yesterday, pointing to recurring issues with plane parts and multiple concerning incidents involving 737 models. A Spirit Aero Systems spokesperson said the company is, quote, wholly focused on providing our customers with the best quality product. A Boeing spokesperson declined to comment. Legendary actor Louis Gossett Jr. has died. He was the first black man to win a supporting actor Oscar for his role in An Officer and a Gentleman. Gossett won an Emmy for his role in the TV uh, miniseries Roots. He debuted on Broadway at age 16 and his career quickly blossomed on TV. A cause of death hasn't been announced. Gossett was 87. Rapper Sean Diddy Combs had his homes raided by federal law enforcement earlier this week. We are now learning this is a part of a human trafficking investigation. Now this high profile case is shining light on sex trafficking across the country. National correspondent Janae Bowens has a look at the severity of the issue. After months of sexual assault lawsuits, CNN reports a federal law enforcement source says hip hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs is a target of an investigative unit that handles human trafficking crimes. At the appropriate time, we'll be happy to, to speak about it, but it's an ongoing investigation. Authorities are staying tight-lipped for now, but federal agents searched the rappers' homes in Los Angeles and Miami earlier this week. What investigators appear to be looking for, and this would be appropriate, are laptops and uh, phones and thumb drives. The investigation into Diddy helps put into focus the proven human trafficking issues across the country. It's the business of exploiting vulnerable people for sex and profit. It's estimated that 72 percent of those trafficked in the U.S. are immigrants. It's an issue some say is further exacerbated by the Biden administration's border policies, especially since border authorities encountered a record high of more than 152,000 unaccompanied children in fiscal year 2022 alone. Many of these children uh, will enter the U.S. illegally and be put at risk of sexual exploitation. According to Polaris, the operator of the National Human Trafficking Hotline, undocumented immigrants and those facing poverty or economic need are more vulnerable to trafficking. Experts say parents and guardians must keep a close eye on their children, too. Many, many cases where young people are lured away from their parents and their grandparents uh, via social media. And Didi bringing it full circle when it comes to the investigation into Combs. His attorney told CNN that there was, quote, no excuse for the large show of force by law enforcement agencies. He also said his client is innocent and will work to clear his name. Combs has not been charged or arrested. Looking nationwide, Janae, what is the scope of human trafficking here in the U.S.? Well, since it takes place behind closed doors, it's difficult for law enforcement to track. Victims are also scared of retaliation and oftentimes remain silent. But in 2021, more than 10,000 situations of human trafficking were reported to the U.S. National Human Trafficking Hotline involving nearly 16,600 individual victims. But again, experts say these numbers are likely only a fraction of the actual problem. Didi. Live from Washington, D.C., Janae Bowens, thank you.
Coming up, the latest inflation numbers and what that could mean for interest rate cuts. Then the dangerous reason why around half a million Kias are being recalled. And later, residents of a Washington town say they've been traumatized by false alarms from a siren system. What city leaders are now calling for. The gauge that the Federal Reserve uses as its preferred measure of inflation went up slightly last month. The Personal Consumption Expenditures Index went up 2.5% in February when compared to a year earlier. That was up slightly from January's 2.4%. These numbers are in line with what the Federal Reserve expected, as some policymakers want the Fed to reduce interest rates, but Fed Chair Jerome Powell didn't tip which way the Fed is leaning on a change in policy. And you, you won't hear us overreacting to these two months that are higher. The reason that's important is that the decision to begin to reduce rates is a very, very important one. And if lobster prices rise in the near future, it could be because Maine implemented new regulations for lobster fishing this year. The state now requires fishermen to report where, when, and how many lobsters are catching each day in an effort to increase the lobster population. But some find the paperwork to be a hassle and have quit altogether. 43 years of doing it, I took the last of my gear out of the water on New Year's Day. And I said, that's that, that probably it. It's come to be too restrictive to go. It creates more work. And uh, I can't create any more revenue uh, because of the restrictions they're putting on him. To keep a tracking device on board so the Atlantic States Commission can track their movements in the Gulf of Maine in next year. The Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission will require lobstermen to throw one pounders back based on the decline of last year's catch. A rise in high profile clashes between squatters and homeowners is causing state lawmakers to take action. In red and blue states alike, efforts are being made to take back so called squatters' rights. Kayla Gaskins has more. Florida state lawmakers taking a sledgehammer to squatters' rights. You are not going to be able to commandeer somebody's private property uh, and expect to get away with it. Governor Ron DeSantis signing the law this week, effectively ending squatters' rights in the state. Sinclair Station WPEC spoke with Florida homeowner Patty Peoples, who pushed for the changes after squatters took over her property. In my case, they did $40,000 of intentional damage. Florida and the way that they got this bill written and passed should be a template for every other state. The New York State Assembly is currently working on a bipartisan effort to tighten their own laws after two people squatting in a vacant Manhattan apartment were arrested and charged with murdering the homeowner when she returned. Current state laws and New York City laws heavily favor squatters over homeowners. It would allow lawful homeowners to remove squatters by redefining squatters as trespassers rather than tenants under New York State law. And it would add squatting to the definition of criminal trespass. 
Residents in California are growing increasingly frustrated with people taking over vacant properties. Just outside Beverly Hills, a squatter moved into a $5 million home in the same neighborhood as J-Lo and LeBron James. The NBA star's house manager telling New York Magazine his boss was very concerned about the unwelcome neighbor. We're hearing more about it because it actually is increasing, and we've seen matters like this increase overall, leading back to the um, really the eviction moratoriums that were put in place by the prior administration. Florida's new squatter law goes into effect July 1st. Supporters of the changes to the New York law are pushing for swift passage, calling the matter urgent. I'm Kayla Gaskins reporting for the National Desk, America's News Now. Israeli Defense Minister announced today the IDF will expand the campaign against Hezbollah and increase the rate of attacks in the north. In a change of posture, Israel says they are turning from defending and responding to missile fire from Hezbollah to pursuing the terrorist organization in Lebanon, no matter where they are located. This comes as Israel struck several sites, including militia arms depots and Hezbollah offices in Aleppo, Syria today. Syrian state media claiming the strike killed both military personnel and civilians. Israeli media suggests Hezbollah militants, including one of the Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah's chief advisors, were among those killed. Nine people have been detained in Tajikistan in connection with last week's Moscow concert hall attack, according to a Russian state news agency. It's believed that they were in contact with a gunman involved in the tragedy that killed 144 people. They're also suspected of having connections to the Islamic State, which has claimed responsibility for the attack. President Biden issued a statement today in response to the one-year anniversary of Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich's Russian arrest. Now, Biden said the U.S. will impose costs for Russia's, quote, appalling attempt to use Americans as bargaining chips. Gershkovich is being held on spying charges. Biden said his administration is working every day to bring Gershkovich home. Losing your religion, a little more than one in four Americans are religiously unaffiliated, a five-point increase from 10 years ago. A new study from PRRI studied retention rates of major religions in the U.S. from childhood to adulthood from 2013 to 2023 and found atheism, or those religiously unaffiliated, is growing the most, while Catholics suffered the greatest loss. 18% of Americans left a major religion over over that time. Black Protestants and Judaism held the highest retention rates of all religious groups in the study. The Pope skipped the Good Friday way of the cross procession at Rome's Colosseum today for health reasons, according to the Vatican. He had prepared meditations to read aloud at each station, but ended up following the event from his Vatican home. He's been dealing with a chronic case of the flu, bronchitis or a cold. Kia is recalling just under half a million Telluride SUVs because they might roll away while in park. The recall is for model years 2020 through 2024. Kia acknowledged that some uh, shaft components might not fully engage and suggests that owners use the emergency brake before exiting the vehicles until they are fixed. Although Kia estimates only about 1% of these SUVs actually have the defect, no injuries or accidents have been reported. Heavy duty trucks and buses will have to meet stricter emission standards starting with model years 2027. The EPA just put in place new rules that it says will save the country $13 billion because of fewer hospital visits, missed work days and deaths. Industry groups say the rules are unattainable with current EV technology. The CDC is warning about a rare but serious infection that's on the rise caused by a strain of Neisseria meningitis bacteria. Many recent cases had unusual symptoms like painful infected joints. It's also affecting middle-aged adults, unlike typical meningitis that affects young people. The death rate is around one in six and immediate antibiotic treatment is essential. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for women in the United States and can affect women at any age. This Easter weekend, one young mom who recently suffered a heart attack is encouraging others to take care of their own hearts. Medical reporter Liz Bonus shares how she says she's healing body, mind, and spirit. 
Hey there, everybody. Hello to you. This Easter weekend, Tierra Wade, seen here with her family, celebrating good health after a recent heart event happened when she was just 32 years old. She credits her healing to a strong medical team and a strong faith. This past July, I woke up, was getting my kids ready for school, and I started having a serious amount of heartburn um, that landed into chest pain. And before I knew it, I felt like I heard from God, you need to go to the hospital. Immediately, heart surgeons at Ohio's Christ Hospital opened up a blocked vessel and likely saved Tierra's life heart attacks happening young women. We often think the heart attacks are the grandmother's disease or we get that when we get older. As Tierra learned, young heart attacks are often linked to family history. I have an identical twin sister and she went and got genetic testing and her levels were through the roof high, like mine's were as a risk. But in all this, Tierra, who works in outreach for Crossroads, a non-denominational in-person and online church, says this Easter weekend she's also reflecting on the peace that she's had since that first day when she needed urgent care. I tend to, when things still get rough, like just go back to being in cath lab and picturing Jesus being in the operating room and kind of um, being the one that's calling all the shots. Um, and I can't explain the peace, but knowing that he was there and knowing that he's saving me because I still have a bigger purpose to do in this world. That purpose now, she says, encouraging women to seek early intervention for heart health and support if you need it from family, friends, and faith. Since the heart attack, God has made pathways for oxygen and love and light and him to really help me know what my worth is and help me use my voice in powerful ways and help me speak life into other people where I wasn't doing that before. The stress reduction, Tierra says she feels from that, of course, another important step in heart health. Uh, she says it works for body and soul. With your health news, I'm Liz Bonus reporting. Coming up, Utah is introducing a groundbreaking way to recycle wastewater, how it works right after this. We have reporters all across the country in your neighborhoods covering issues that matter to you. We're taking the pulse of America. Authorities are searching for 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers, who's been missing since February 26. The teen's mother, father, and stepfather met with the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation yesterday. Rogers' biological father said he didn't learn any new information that he can discuss. He also said he recently found out the Tennessee Department of Children's Services was called to Sebastian's mother and stepfather's home. Somebody somewhere dropped the ball because I was never informed. And I'm the biological father. I have joint legal, joint physical custody. Our team asked him if any of the three parents were being investigated as potential suspects. He says, as of now, investigators don't have any information that would attach them to any wrongdoing. 
While the Tolt River may look tranquil here, people in Carnation say they've been traumatized by the warning system set up to tell them the dam upstream has breached. Every false alarm is a problem. Even if it's a, a, an alarm that, oh, sorry, testing, like the kids don't comprehend that. They've already gone into panic mode. The latest false alarm on Wednesday convinced Carnation city leaders that the dam, which Seattle owns and Seattle Public Utilities operates, has got to go. But I, along with other members of the council, have taken the first step towards declaring our position that the dam needs to be drained. This is first of its kind in Utah, and it's the first of its kind in the nation coming from a reclamation facility that we're getting our water from. In South Jordan, there's a new technology to purify water. It essentially takes indoor wastewater and transforms it into something you can safely drink. Indoor wastewater comes to Riverton in the Reclamation Center. Instead of going back out to the Jordan River, it comes here for purification. For the next five years, water will be filtered and tested here. The water isn't publicly distributed yet, but that's the goal. For the first time in history, world timekeepers may have to consider subtracting a second from our clocks because the planet is rotate, rotating faster than it used to. It's called a negative leap second. And according to a study in the journal Nature, the change isn't supposed to take place until around 2029. Coordinated universal time is designed by ultra precise atomic clocks around the world, but they do not align exactly with the Earth's rotation. And that's going to do it for us. For this edition of the National Desk, we invite you to join us again this evening for more coverage on America's top stories. Check your local listings. I'm Dee Dee Gatton. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tonight.